Hi, I'm Moby, and this is my little asteroid. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself and specifically why I'm a vegan. So I was born in Harlem a long, long time ago, way back in 1965. And because my parents were um, complicated, I ended up spending a lot of time with our rescued animals. We had rescued dogs, rescued cats, even rescued lab rats. So by the time I was three or four years old, I had learned two incredibly valuable lessons. One, that humans were terrifying. And two, that animals were great. Then, when I was around three years old, my father died. My mom and me and all of our menagerie moved to Connecticut, where my mom had grown up. We were very poor on food stamps and welfare, so we moved into a tiny little garage apartment. It was really small and cold in the winter, but it was filled with animals, so it was actually a fairly happy place. See, I unconditionally loved all of the rescued animals that we lived with. But I was also a little suburban boy, so I loved eating animals. I mean, I loved junk food, I loved hamburgers, I loved pepperoni pizza. And one day, when I was around 10 years old, I was walking by the town dump. As I walked by the entrance, I heard a tiny little mew coming from a small cardboard box. I looked inside the old cardboard box and I saw three dead kittens and one tiny, barely alive kitten. So I froze. I didn't know what to do but I scooped up the barely alive kitten and I rushed him home. My grandmother had an old dachshund named George and he adopted the kitten and nursed him back to health. I named him Tucker and he very quickly became my best friend. And as he was my best friend, we pretty much did everything together. And a few years later, when I was 19, I was playing with Tucker one day, and I had this incredibly simple realization. See, I loved Tucker unconditionally, and I knew that he had this rich emotional life, and two eyes, and a central nervous system, and a deep desire to avoid pain and suffering. And sitting there with Tucker, I had this realization that all animals have rich emotional lives, and a profound desire to avoid pain and suffering. And just as I would never ever do anything to hurt Tucker, I realized in that moment that I could never do anything that would hurt any animal. So in the summer of 1984, I became a vegetarian. Some time passed and I learned more and more about the treatment of cows and chickens on dairy and egg farms. And I concluded that if I wanted to respect animals and cause as little suffering as I could, I had to become a vegan. So, in November 1987, I became a vegan. There was just one problem. In 1987, I didn't know of any other vegans. I mean, the vegan world in 1987 was tiny. I found out about one vegan restaurant in New York City called Angelica's Kitchen. And even though I was completely broke and living in an abandoned factory, I tried to go there as often as I could. So when I wasn't DJing or working on electronic music in the abandoned factory, I spent time in libraries trying to find out as much as I could about animal agriculture. I had become a vegan for my love of animals, but the more research I did, I realized that raising animals for food wasn't just killing animals, it was killing us. 
In 1994, I got my first modem, and I found even more information about meat and dairy production on a bunch of different news groups. I was horrified by the extent of the problem, but also weirdly excited because I thought I could help make a change. I tried to tell people about the consequences of producing and consuming meat and dairy, but I was largely ignored or ridiculed. I talked about meat and dairy production in interviews and I wrote about it in liner notes, but almost never found anyone who was willing to listen. I did more and more research and I kept finding more information about how meat and dairy production and consumption were killing us, but it seemed like people were completely unwilling to listen or even consider change. The data was showing that meat and dairy production and consumption was causing cancer, heart disease, diabetes, antibiotic resistance, climate change, deforestation, algae blooms, ocean acidification, and famine, and on and on. It was especially horrifying because it was all subsidized by our tax dollars. Governments all around the world were spending trillions of dollars subsidizing meat and dairy production when the meat and dairy were making people sick and ruining the environment. I was honestly completely overwhelmed by the enormity of the problem and also profoundly depressed at people's unwillingness to listen or even consider change. But then sometime in the early 2000s, things actually started changing. More and more animal activists started making movies and writing books and communicating on social media, spreading the message that using animals for food was destroying one trillion animals a year and also killing us and destroying the only home we have. Politicians are of course still pretending that they can save the world while continuing to produce meat and dairy, but even slowly they are starting to accept that that's just not the case. Of course, there's so much work left to do, but we are making tons and tons of progress. And it's worth remembering that if we all stopped producing and eating meat and dairy tomorrow, deforestation would be reduced by 90%. Healthcare costs could be reduced by 50%. Water use would be reduced by 50%. Antibiotic resistance would be reduced by 80%. Famine could largely be eliminated. 60% of plastic ocean pollution would be eliminated. Many pandemics would be prevented. And one of the leading causes of climate change would end. And for me, one of the most important things if we stopped using animals for food, we would save over one trillion animals a year. Because to be clear, I wanna save people, I wanna save animals, and I wanna save the only home we have. And all of that is why I'm a vegan.